<laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome. Uh, my name is Titi Nguenya, Director of Communications. <laughs> We've got a lot of folks coming in. Hi, everyone. And we're delighted to welcome all of you to our craft chat this morning, this afternoon. This is a series where we get to chat with artists and creators about our exhibitions, our workshops, and, and more. So we can bring you a little bit of the Fuller Craft experience while you're at home. So today we have an awesome guest. James Grashaw is going to take us through a tour of his studio. You want to make it louder? If anyone has any questions, we're going to do a tour with James Grashaw and his, um, uh, his in his studio in Reading, Connecticut. It'll be wonderful. And if you have any questions, please feel free to put your questions in the chat box. This time, we're actually going to feed him those questions during the tour so that he can give you uh, live responses while he's going through the tour. And through You're going the to try to throw me off the track. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And we also will be recording the session. So if you, if you are unable to attend or you know folks who were not able to attend, uh, we will post this session on our website and on our social media feeds. One last thing, if you enjoy what you hear today and you enjoy the programming for this Craft Chat Week, we hope that you please consider making a donation to support Fuller Craft Museum. And if you look at the top of the chat box, there is a link that you can click on to make a donation. I'd like to introduce our wonderful chief curator of exhibitions and collections, Beth McLaughlin. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you all so much for being here as we dive deep into the brain of Jimmy Grashow and all his incredible work that he's done over a 50 plus uh, year career. Um, I know it's been a tough week um, in this country, and I just wanted to thank everyone for joining us. Hopefully, we can provide a little bit of levity and, and some respite um, from all the troubles. So we are honored to have Jimmy Grasha with us here today. I just told him Hello. I was going to take a quick trip down memory lane to, <laughs> to uh, give just a little bit of background about his work leading up to the Great Monkey Project that's currently at Fuller Craft Museum and that we've been able to extend through the end of January of 2021, giving everybody a chance um, when we reopen to come and see it in person. Um, so Jimmy, you were uh, born and raised in Brooklyn, New York. Yes. and. Yes. You received your BFA from mm -hmm. the Pratt Institute and then studied in Florence on a Fulbright grant before yes. returning to get your MFA from the Pratt Institute, um, which of course led to a very successful career. Um, I'm gonna share just some slides that I pulled together. So this is Jimmy during the installation for the Great Monkey Project. One, okay. one monkey. And then as one monkey, 79 more to go. Right. Um, as I said, early on in your career, Jimmy, you did a lot of work in woodcuts and illustrations, um, which was very well received. They were published in a variety of outlets, including the New York Times, and also for Columbia Records. Um, yeah. You did, I know, I, I know several album covers for bands like Jethro Tull and the Yardbirds, and I know you're gonna show us some of those um, on the tour today, which is really exciting. Um, and this, of course, led to your work in cardboard, which I believe you began working in cardboard in the 60s. Is that right? I, I, think, I, I think when I was a little kid, my, uh, my father had an appliance store in Brooklyn, and we had unlimited access to uh, refrigerator boxes. So I think my career started in cardboard when I was, uh, you know, when I was uh, a little kid, right? Yeah. Building, building robots, building robots and... Uh, you know, rocket ships and uh, making puppet theaters and, and everything. So yeah. everybody loves cardboard. So right. I, just, yeah. uh, I just sort of stayed with it. And you've done a lot with it for sure. And I think when you started creating art pieces in it, you didn't look back and there's a many series of works. Um, we're looking at here, the uh, card birds on the left. And I know you've done many of those, the house plants on the right. We have, of course, the fish and your cityscapes, um, all of which is on your website, which is very extensive. And I encourage everyone to go and check that out. The city, I haven't seen the city for, for, for a long time. We did the city um, 
the city piece for the New York City Boat Show. And actually one of the oh. great things about that is that every, um, every few hours, Twiggy, the water skiing squirrel, you know, it was in a gigantic <laughs> pool, you know, did a, um, you know, circled, circled it in a little motorboat. So wow. it was pretty fantastic. Wow. Did you anyway. get a video of that? No, I, no, I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I, did. <laughs> I should have, but we should play that. Yeah. Right. Oh. And then, of course, we have your fountain that was at the Aldrich in Ridgefield, Connecticut. Right. Um, and I know you're going to probably be speaking about that on the tour. There's a lot to say there. Um, and then we have your larger scale installation work, monumental, on the left at the Peabody Essex Museum, and at the right at the... Um, it was High, High Point University. High Point University, yeah, that's Gulliver. Gulliver, I believe, correct? It was, it, we called it the Great Gulliver, Gulliver Project. And we, we, I built it with about 50 students inside of a little room. We, we shipped in the cardboard. Nothing was there when we started. And I think over a week, you know, we put the whole thing together like, a, uh, like putting a ship in a bottle. Nobody could figure out how we got the, um, uh, how we got the, giant, the giant man inside this uh, yeah. little room. But uh, we wow. built it. We built it right inside the room. Amazing. And then I know you've done a, a number of different types of animals throughout your career. You had um, one of your installations was Yazoo, a corrugated menagerie that was also at the Aldrich, and I and I believe that, that, that exhibition led to absolutely yes. It was. Uh, it was. I. I and that led that. to the Great Monkey Project. Yeah. Right. I built the uh, I built that for the Aldridge and it was uh, a life size menagerie of, of everything. We had a we had a life size elephant, which we called a pachyderm, a package derm, and there was a uh, crocodiles and uh, and the camels, lions, tigers, and I did twelve um, I did twelve monkeys, and um, th they were fantastic. The way they articulated the negative space and everything, they were. They were wild, and my mother was in a nursing home actually in um, in Stamford, Connecticut, and she sat in a dining room, not speaking to anybody, uh, you know, for you know, for, I think for 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 a long time. She was very silent, and every um, I would visit her, and I was working on the project. I brought a cardboard monkey to the uh, to the dining room and pulled it out of a um, a, a black garbage bag, and the entire uh, dining room exploded. Monkey, monkey, monkey. So uh, <laughs> I knew the monkeys were really like, um, they touched a primal, a primal chord. So I, um, I came home, wrote on my flow chart, uh, great monkey project and started yeah. making monkeys. And within a week, uh, uh, this woman, Rachel LaFoe from the Decordova called me up and said, we have a, a huge space. We have an opening coming up you know, would you, you have a project that you would like to do? And I said, yes, great monkey project. And she said, go ahead, do it. And that was, yeah. uh, that was the beginning of it. Yeah. And I saw it, that installation at the court of an, one of those, you know, art experiences that's definitely um, has stuck with me all these years. And we started working together in early 2019. And I reached out to you about bringing the monkeys here to Fuller Craft because we have a right. similar gallery space with a lot of overhead hanging area. And I thought, you know, we do a whole range of exhibitions, um, some of which touch on pretty um, challenging content. And I thought, oh, you know, this would be a good balance for us to have something more playful, more whimsical. Um, obviously, what you're doing with material and transforming this humble um, material into these transformative art pieces is really um, extraordinary. And similar to the response that you received taking the monkey out of the plastic bag, I mean, you brought a few to show us when you came to do the visit. Yes. And I think all of our staff had the same, the same reaction where it was just pure delight and joy. And, um, you know, we're so happy to have it here at the museum. I have some well, I'm, 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 I'm like, thrilled. I'm thrilled here. that it was there. As soon as I walked into the space at the Fuller, you know, and, uh, and saw the room, it just um, it just sung to me. It said yes. Do you know what I mean? It, all the monkeys uh, said yes. We want to yeah. be there. So <laughs> we want to. Well, here they are getting ready to go. Space. Yeah. <laughs> here they are getting ready to go. I love the little suitcase with Fuller Craft Museum right. that he's carrying. 
Right. And then this is during the installation. You brought them all in. There's 80 of them just about right. and laid them down in the great room and were so generous and kind and spoke to one of the school groups that came in about them. Um, yeah. And, you know, what I, what I really do love about them is that they have this really remarkable whimsy and playfulness, but there's also this slight darkness to them as well. And some of the issues that you're touching upon working with cardboard is of course aging and our mortality and decline. Yes, and I know exactly you'll right. talk more about that, but I just, yeah, I just wanted to say that there's so much power to the works and there it's, it's not just kind of the playful sensibility that you see on the surface that there's a lot of um, important um, content going on here. Well, every, so um, everything, like everything. I said, Everything at its core is is about is about space and process, you know, and uh, yeah. and and the monkeys address, do you know what I mean, both of those with, um, you know, just incredibly. So, uh, you know, they're they're extraordinary to work with, yeah, and uh, and they conform they conform and work almost in 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 every space. Every space yeah. makes uh, makes makes them different. Yeah. Well, well we're okay. so thrilled to have them here. Here. And I'm going to throw it back to you and TT so that we can get out to your studio and see where all the magic happens. So okay. thank you. <laughs> so I think we're ready to go. All right. Okay. So here we're, we're, we did this part. We did this part of the, of the talk in the house. This Hi, is Leslie. My wife, <laughs> Hello, everybody. my wife, who I'm married to for uh, fi probably 52 years. <laughs> <laughs> you know, wait, wait, so, I'm just, I'm the camera woman. Right. We're ready to go. Okay, so the, the house is this is orderly, you know what I mean, and, and very, very well put together. Neat, you know, neat, no wood chips, no uh, nothing, nothing cardboard chips. And then the studio, we go, we pass this little, this little way, right? And, uh, and here, but, this, this, the house and the studio, which is uh, pretty much all chaos, you know, everything works together. So I made a little cardboard sign together, right? So uh, anyway, so ta -da. here's the studio. No, a million things, a million things going on here. These, these dancers, these dancers are, um, they're about uh, 11. Well, let me just say before we just, when I was a little kid, I used to, um, whenever I felt comfortable in a space, I would, I would pace it out. And it turned out that every space that I was comfortable in, you know, was about 30 by 40 with about, with a 14 foot high ceiling. So when I had a chance to do a studio, that's the, the measurements um, of, of, of what I did. So 30, 30 by 40, my magic space. Anyway, these, uh, these dances are about 11 feet high. You know, they were, uh, they were made for a show at uh, the Cameron Museum in Wilmington, North Carolina. And uh, there were actually three sets of them. And the whole idea was, you know, I, I, always, I always loved dancers. I would always, when I was teaching, when I was teaching, actually I did like a dance project. I always loved, you know, the whole idea of the movement and the positive and negative space and everything was so, was so incredible, but I was trying to figure out a way to do them on um, with cardboard, and then I thought that we could put them on on casters and platforms. So there was a, a dance track. You could have danced all night. Da -da -da -dee, da -da. Anyway, the spaces there were shadows on the walls, and the spaces would collapse between the pieces. They would open up. Do you know, and uh, everybody would push, everybody would be pushing them around. So it was uh, a, a, a phenomenal interactive space and show that acted on a, on a million, on a million levels. And- uh, Oh, and Leslie. Think... Oh, Leslie. Okay. One question. Yeah. Could you turn the camera so that we, horizontally, so that we can see more? Yeah. That's great. Thank you. Yeah, the casters. Wow. And Jimmy, uh, um, Carhop wants to know, are the figures hollow? Of the, of the what? Figures hollow. They're all hollow. I mean, they're, they're so light. And that's the whole thing about cardboard. 
you know, they, they, they move. If they fell on anybody, nobody would get hurt, right? But actually, actually somebody has, uh, somebody saw these, somebody saw these, and I've just done a, um, I've just done 11 foot high dancers for a small college in, uh, in, um, uh, in West Virginia. And, uh, and they're being at a foundry right now being made into bronze. So they're gonna be on the plaza of this, uh, of this college. But they're much, more, they're much more fluid. Here, I'll show you. This is a, this was a little maquette. This was a little maquette for when I started doing, when I started doing that out of cardboard. Right? Wow, that's great. You know, so anyway, here's a, here's a, you know, big, big ship that I made. You know, so this was an installation, this was actually an installation that I had at the Allen Stone Gallery. Here, here look, here. This, this was the installation when the ship was there. So I made, uh, the entire show was made out of woodcuts. Nice. So, I, Thanks, so whenever anybody does a print, it's usually, uh, they number them. It's like one out of a hundred, one out of 200, whatever it is. But if you make a print, you can make, you can make a million, a million prints. You can make an ocean or a forest or a, uh, you can do anything. So oh. I just thought that if I made, if I made three giant uh, uh, wave prints, right? I could build an ocean and then make an ocean liner and then everybody could walk through it and get deeper and deeper as they got to the, uh, as they got to the boat. Jimmy, so Jimmy, so the Jimmy, 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 uh, yes. Kathy Young wants to know if that was your, if that was uh, your first cardboard work of art. It was what? Was that your first cardboard work of art? The ship? No, actually, actually, no, actually, I don't even consider that, you know what I mean, uh, one of the, the true cardboard works, works. It was more, I think of this almost as a gigantic woodcut. I think the first cardboard uh, show that I really had was a show called uh, Cardboardosauruses, which was a room full of cardboard dinosaurs, you know, and then, uh, and then I think we did our first cardboard workshop from that. You know, we, everybody, all the little kids and everybody came into this museum. It was actually at the, uh, at the Bridgeport Discovery Museum and everybody, uh, all the kids made, made cardboard dinosaurs. So it was fantastic, you know. Anyway, everything on this ship, everything on this ship was made from woodcuts, you know, all, all of these were little woodcut prints, you know. So I thought of it as a gigantic, uh, as, a, as a gigantic print. Here, look, come to the front. You know, it's, it's an, a lot of disrepair now. But here, and before we did that, before that, I built a, a show called, uh, here, come, come this way. <laughs> Jimmy, where do you get I your? Called... Here, I, here, I did a show called uh, A City. Uh -huh. and where do I get my, the cardboard? Where do you get your cardboard? There's a place in Danbury. They tell me if I, if I tell where I got it, you know what I mean? They'll come and kill me, right? <laughs> but, uh, you know, but uh, I've been working with them. It's a place called Danbury Square Box Company. Every small town, every small little city you know, has a place that processes cardboard. And uh, they, um, you know, so I've been working with them for probably 40, 40 years. I knew the grandparents, the parents, what is that? New, New, and it's all, it's all, I get big giant sheets. Here, here, I get big sheets of, uh, you know, I get sheets of four by eight, four by, four by eight cardboard. Okay. You know, it's, fan, it's fantastic. Cardboard is, uh, oh my God, I love my wife, I love my grandkids, my kids, you know what I mean? Uh, I love cardboard. <laughs> <laughs> we have, we have somebody, we have a mother who, uh, Alison Stabil, who took her, um, took her children to the Cardboardosaurus show. Oh God, I, I remember that, it's unbelievable. <laughs> you know, that, it was Allison. so long, it was Allison, Al, hello Allison, anyway. It was uh, a, a million years ago, and I remember when I, 
it was extraordinary. There was a cardboard workshop. Uh, they asked me to do a, this, this workshop. So I gathered all the cardboard I, ca I got. You know, uh, parents came into the room with their kids, expecting they were going to leave the kids for the workshop. And then uh, I, I explained how to make a, I gave a little demonstration on how to make a, 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 a cardboard dinosaur. And then all of a sudden, the kids just leapt, leapt up, you know what I mean, and ran to the pile. And uh, it was like a cardboard tsunami. And the parents <laughs> and the grandparents never, never left. It, the cardboard, the cardboard is, uh, is uh, the perfect, anyway, let me just back up. Art, you know, I think art and creativity, I think the engine, I think the engine of art, the engine of creativity is play. You know, and there's no more perfect playmate than, uh, than, than a sheet of cardboard. It's innately knows its mortality. To, uh, it's tied to humans. They say that uh, they say that 90% of every th single thing on this planet has spent some time uh, of its part of its life in cardboard. So, uh, right. But anyway, so here, so this is the boat. These were these were part of these were. These were prints, you know, one of the, one of the, the cardboard prints. The, the, the fish, I was asked after I did, after I did this, this piece called The Fountain, which was very dark and very melancholy in a way, I think I, I needed something that was really more joyous and light. And I, and I was asked by Mass Mocha to do a, uh, a show. So I did 40, I did 40 fish, right? And, uh, and, the, and they all hung from the ceiling and they swayed in the, they swayed in the, uh, in the breeze. And there was, there's millions, there are a lot of fish that are gone and there was a mermaid. So, uh, oh my God, here, this, I'm, now I'm seeing things I haven't seen for a long time. Oh, this is, Jimmy, um, we got a yes. question, two, two questions. One, uh, what do you use to glue the cardboard together? And also, there's a request to show your album covers. Yeah, I'll show, I'll show that. You know, here there. Uh, I use um, I use basically Elmer's with Elmer's tape and hot glue. You can you can do anything. If you have enough, if you have cardboard tape, uh, Elmer's, you can you can build anything in the world. You know, anything, anything. Okay, and uh, here. So oh, here. So just. I just want to show you, this is a big giant, this was a big giant man, right? It was, uh, it went 22 feet high, right? And was installed in a building on, in Manhattan. These were, uh, these were the legs. <laughs> these were the giant legs, you know, so it, it was, and this was the head, you know, what is that? And then, so anyway, so it was, it was just, Installed in the building there for I think about three, maybe three, four years, and then the building went bankrupt. And then they called me up and they said, uh, "Jimmy, you know we uh, have to vacate the premises immediately. Can you come and get? Can you come and get this?" So I said, "Yeah, I did." So I got a truck and a couple of guys, and we uh, we hauled the big man home, right? You know, back to its root. Okay, here I'll show you. Uh, so here, this is uh, this is uh, this is. Uh, more, more cardboard. This is uh, the this is the fountain. So the fountain took about maybe five years, about five years to, to make, and uh, and the, the the whole the whole idea the whole idea in a way was that everybody, if you're an artist, everybody works from beginning to finish. You know, you you start a project and you you work to finish, but almost nobody, you know, takes takes the process the entire way from finish to uh, to the end. So I wanted to explore that and, uh, and explore my own, my own fears about mortality and frailty and everything. So I decided not to compromise, not to back down and to build, uh, you know, and to build this piece. So after, after a short tour of the country, we installed it outside, uh, we sold it outside at the Aldridge Museum and, uh, and then waited for the rains to come. So anyway, there's a documentary about that called the Cardboard Bernini, which is uh, anyway, which is fantastic. So you know, wonderful. Anyway, well, here so, a few more questions, Jimmy, have come in. Yes. Uh, so, what tools do you use to cut the cardboard, 
And again, how do you fasten the pieces together? Well, I'll show, I'll, I'll show you, I'll show you everything. When I do the demonstration, I'll show you, but, I, but it's all razors, exacto knives, exacto okay. knives and a, uh, a utility knife in the, okay. uh, and, and do you paint in the, the old, in the old days, in the old days, they had utility knives and they had a, uh, a little screw in it. If a blade got dull, you would have to uh, take a little screw, unscrew it, open it up. But now, but now they have little, little chains in, the blade goes out. You know, I always thought that, uh, that everybody's giving advice to people. Like before you die, you know, you, you give advice. So there is advice like a uh, smell, don't, you know, don't, uh, you know, stop and smell the roses, you know, stop and enjoy your life, you know, don't work so hard. My advice would be use sharp tools, mm -hmm. change blades often, right? So I think that's, I think that's great, great advice to live your life by. Okay. Thank you for the thank you for that advice. Uh, <laughs> also, well, here, here, I just want to show you. This is. A, do you have another question? Oh, another question. Yes, a couple of questions. Do you do you paint the fish? And also, could you talk about the ocean as inspiration? About the ocean. Yes. It's, yeah. a, it's you know the ocean. They're all great. You know, in in every in every project you know, they're the seeds of the next project. So, you know, you can trace the line back from piece to piece, you know what I mean, back to the beginning, back to the beginning of time. You know, when I actually, when I did the ocean project, when I did the ocean project, I, it sort of was out of the box for me. It wasn't, it was, it was, I, I wasn't sure exactly where it came from. And then I was looking through stuff and I realized that when I was a little kid, you know, I sat in front of the television and I watched, there was an artist very much like this guy, Bob Ross today. There was a guy named John Nagy, you know, and he, uh, he did a, a TV show where he would draw pictures and paint them on, on the spot. And a picture that he did was, was an ocean, you know, and a dock, you know, and a, a lighthouse. And uh, when I saw that picture, I realized that that's exactly in my adult life, what I had done. I had recreated that in three dimensions. And uh, anyway, it's very difficult to know what the origins of, of, of everything, but everything, if you're an artist, you're sort of like a, a detective, you know what I mean? And you're constantly on your the trail of your, of your, of yourself. So anyway, here, let me, here, this is, uh, these, these, you know, card, card, cardboard can be so incredibly, uh, you know, bold and, wow. and fluid, but then you can do something so small. And uh, this was uh, all, all of the, all of the ridges wow. in the cardboard are, are called fluting, you know, and there's E flute and F flute, you know, some of them are larger, some of them are smaller. So I decided to do a whole series of, um, of, of birds, of cardboards, and, uh, and paint them all. And the beauty of the cardboard is that you can paint you could paint something on the surface, a color on the surface, and then paint a different color in the trough, you know, between, between everything. So, so you, it was, I, I thought of this not only just as a cardboard piece, but just, but as a, as a painting, like a tome to James Audubon in a way, right? All, you know, all American birds. Well, here, this was a, here, this is a, a bird, fra a bird fragment. Are they painted on both sides? They, yeah, they're painted. Uh, they're, 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 you, I put a primer. I put a primer on on them, and then they're painted on both sides. And and what happens is because because of the fluting, you know, you could run a little wire into the flute and 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 curve them slightly. So there's uh, this entire piece, except for the beaks, except for the beaks and the legs, was made from cardboard and twist ties, you know, so there are garden twist ties that go through the center of all, you know, of all the pieces and tie everything together. Wow. But here's a fragment of a show I had a billion years ago, you know, a billion years ago where everything was made out of thread. So these were all, it was a, 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 a grove of seeded trees, but everything was made out of thread. So that was uh, a little part of the only thing remaining from that. 
We we had so, someone we had somebody who was wondering if you did work in other mediums. Yes. Yeah, so you know, yeah, here these wood here the, I do the woodcuts. You know, so here these were these were woodcuts, and uh, when I went to school, when I went to school, and they gave, I took a class at Pratt. They gave a class in woodcuts, and everybody else, for some reason, when they started woodcutting, all the cools would jam. But for me, for some genetic, you know, who knows, cosmic reason, the tools just uh, were so fluid. So here, this is a, a woodcutting process. This is all, this is all Swiss pearwood, which if you do woodcuts, Swiss pearwood is, uh, I said I love my wife and I love my, uh, my grandkids and my kids and I love cardboard. I also love Swiss pearwood. You know, Swiss, it's, it's phenomenal. You can cut cross grain, you can, uh, you can do everything. You know, and here, these are, these are uh, tools. What was the worst um, um, injury that you've ever had? Is that a question? Yes. <laughs> you know, like a, anyway, anyway there, there, everybody that knows this place, it's like a, it's like a danger zone. There are <laughs> razor blades, there are razor blades, all over, all over the place. Oh, Leslie. Yes. Could you could you focus in on that that the woodcut and the yeah. fight? What's going on there? Here, this is here. This is all of uh, these are all vegetables. These are all vegetables fighting. Here, here's the, here was a drawing. Here was the draw a drawing for it. And I don't know if you can see that, but they're all all vegetables. All vegetables fighting. Okay. We're, we're here, you know, here's the corn fighting the zucchini. You know what I mean? Little uh, yep. asparagus being beaten up by two tomatoes. I think tomatoes. You have to have two tomatoes. Tomatoes are tough, you know. But a uh, potato beating up a little, a little, uh, a little bean. You know, I here's uh, here's I broccoli, uh -huh. broccoli uh, getting beaten up by corn. <laughs> and we were calling this. This is called vegetable brawl. Vegetable brawl, you know. <laughs> anyway, anyway, here this is here. This studio is a dangerous place. So here, these are just I millions and millions of, uh, of 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 razors. So one time I was rolling around on the studio floor, you know, looking for something, and I felt a little pinch in the back of my leg. And I went into my wife. I said, "Is there anything back there?" She said, "Yeah, you have a little teeny cut, you know." So all day long, it just got worse and worse and worse. And then in the evening, I went to the uh, to the emergency room in the hospital. And uh, you know, there were people there with deep coughs. There was a guy with a gunshot wound and I had this little teeny cut on my, uh, on my, the back of my thigh. And uh, anyway, the doctors came out, they took an x-ray. And evidently when I was rolling on the floor, I swallowed an entire razor blade, <laughs> you know, slipped into my leg. That was the oh worst, that was the worst injury. Anyway, these are, uh, these are house plants. Those house plants are amazing. Can we close in on them? Can you yeah, go close up? Here, so the, I've done loads of these. They're big, beautiful bouquets. These are just, this is, this is just starting. This is going to be a, a wow. beauty, I think. So everything I'm doing, as you get older, you don't want to waste time in a way, you know? So everything I do, I want to, everything I do, I want to, I want it to be a jewel. So, oh, wow. uh, so I love here, the these blue are, one. That is amazing. Anyway, here, so here, these are, you know, see, these are all part of this. Nice. This uh, and the. Uh, anyway, every t every chance I get, every chance I get, I do, I carve leaves. So these are all carved from. Uh, these are all carved from basswood. That's wish, awesome, Leslie. I wish you were here. I wish you were here. So if you can feel. If they start out, they start out, you know, with a, as a block of wood, and you're, then you're putting. Oh, they, I'm sorry, I'm showing my wife. Yeah. They start out as a block of wood, and then you carve them, and then and then paint them. Uh, so there are, but they feel like little potato chips. You know, they're they're so sensual, you know, and beautiful. And it's a it's a great thing. It's a great thing to do. I think if everybody in in Congress, you know what I mean, or the Senate, you know what I mean, would sit around and carve little leaves. I think there would be peace and harmony in the world. We'd all be together, you know? So uh, anyway, here, these are, 
So I said in each piece of the seeds of another piece. So while I was doing the house plants, I thought it would be an unbelievable idea to have, you know, fish come out of the, uh, the plants. So I'm building a thing I'm calling a florarium, you know, and this, this is actually, I did a big giant one, you know, uh, and uh, this is, uh, this is, this is smaller. Oh, this is smaller, but it's all here. These are millions of little fish. Oh yeah, hold still. Hold still. It's tough for me to wow. hold still. But oh, here, but wow. there, but there's uh, here. I'll show you. Uh, just okay. so, Jimmy, a question for you. With so many projects. Here, um, so this is uh, here. Just want to show you. This is one. So each one is carved out of wood, uh -huh. and then I put the uh, the little the fins on, paint it, and then and then attach it. But all of these have to have leaves, you know. So. I'll show you. Uh, these are these are the leaves being carved, right? So here, this is this is all uh, a leaf. Oh. Here, it all it all starts with a block of with a block of wood, right? And then uh, and then you just start. You know what they say? Uh, whittle, uh, whittle by whittle, uh, whittle by whittle. You know. Inchy by inchy, Leonardo da Vinci. And the idea about projects, somebody, you said about so many projects. Yes. I always had this idea that your, your brain is sort of like a stove. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're, you're, you're like a stove. You have, a, you, you have like all the little things on all the burners. You have different pots on it, a different pot on every burner. You know what I mean? You have uh, something in the oven and uh, and every day when you go in and you put your work clothes on and you go into work, you stir whatever pot, you know what I mean, calls to you. you know, and so as things evolve, they, there's an urgency about a piece, you know what I mean, and it calls to you more. And then it finishes, like this piece is, uh, is, ra this piece is ratcheting up. It's getting, uh, it's, it's getting closer and closer. And as it gets closer, it demands more and more attention. It's just, you know, an artwork is like a spiral you, the first steps into it are very, very slow and very sluggish. But if it's right, if it's right, it, uh, it gets quick and quicker as you get to the vortex. And, uh, and that's where you live. You ache to be in the vortex where the, the only thing you can think about is the project and, um, you know, and, and that. And here, this is gonna be a, uh, this is gonna be a little swordfish I thought it'd be great bursting out of the ground and uh, you know, and uh, okay. all the little, all the little grass and everything coming out like, like waves, you know, like a, like a splash and stuff. So I'm just slowly, I'm starting to work on that. And here, this is a piece. I have a friend who, uh, who loves Queen Anne tulips, you know, and these were, these were uh, Queen Anne, this is almost finished. There's a couple more coats on the, uh, on the vase ah. or vase. You know, well, and the those, uh, and the, and the plants, leaves. Will those plants turn into a big bouquet? Will those turn into a? No, this this is a, here, this turned on a, on a side maybe. Here, this is this is a, just a one, you know, one one piece. But mm -hmm. but but the other one the other one uh, will be a, a sort of a bouquet. But I've done big giant bouquets and uh, everything. It just here I'll show you. Here, one second. Maybe, uh, here, this is the uh, this is the tulip. That's a, a photograph of the tulip, oh. right? Yes. You know. So anyway, Lovely. so there. Are, so here. Oh, and here. And now here, monkeys. Here, these are these are. Uh, this is a project. Uh, I'm doing uh, dancing. These dancing monkeys. I love which it. I just, I just finished. <laughs> uh, they were actually. Two other groups. These are these are all scheduled to go to the foundry, and we're all scheduled to go until, you know, the Corona. What is that? They're they're going to be uh, installed in a sculpture park. That's uh, and they're all going to be made into bronze. Oh, so wow. they're just, they're just about to go. So I'll show you the maquettes. The maquettes for this. So you can you can see you know, these are. Uh, but again, you can see it's. You can see that they, they, they work in so many ways because they're so lyrical. 
and the space between everything will start to be open and closed. It'll be, it'll be just uh, incredible when everything is together and all the spaces start to, uh, it's like an alphabet. They say that more, they say that more is, uh, is said between the letters than, than by the actual letters themselves. So you, you have to do things that really speak to space all, all the time. Jimmy, how tall will yeah. they be in the end? How how about how big will these be? These monkeys, these are all these are all life size. I mean, not life size. These are all the size that they'll be. Okay. These are uh, they're going to be cast in bronze in this size, and they're actually they're going to a primo a primo uh, location. It'll be. I can't wait. To, I can't wait till they're installed. Wow. So anyway, so so here's. Oh, I want to show. I I thought about cleaning up. I thought about cleaning up, but I decided not to in this space. But this is the chaos that uh, oh. this is this is what I'm working. What kind right? of paints? What kind of paints do you use? I use, you know, I use acrylic, you know, all acry acrylic paints. So I have there are millions. Oops, there are millions of uh, you know, you know, millions of millions of paints here. Here, cause here. Neat. I love those, Leslie. Yeah, these are all carved. These are all carved out of. See, they're all carved. This is all just started to be carved. Here's. Uh, this is gonna, millions of uh, acrylics. Everything. I I once um, I once was at a, suppo a symposium for for mm -hmm. artists, and uh, everybody was sitting around in the group, and they were, you were asked to introduce yourself. And they would say, what kind of sculptor are you? One guy would say, you know, I'm a, I'm a sculptor in wood. You know, another guy would say, I'm a sculptor in metal. You know, somebody even said they were a sculptor in light. You know, and then they came to me and they said, what, what, are, you, what are you working? I said, I'll work in anything, anything that makes it work. You know, anything. So here, this was a, a car that I was gonna, gonna be a little barracuda that's gonna go into the uh, florarium. All right. Okay. Yeah, Here's a little polarium sign uh, made of, uh, you know, made made by my friend Rick Wastrom. <laughs> Here, millions of millions of prints. Oh wow! Wait, show that again. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Oh, here's a. Oh, here. This was a poster from the Decorum. Ah. Do you know? You know, so, but, oops, let me show you. I don't know. Oh, here's, here's me as a little boy going to school with my little short pants. <laughs> All right, you know, anyway. Jimmy, um, we have a question about how much, how many hours in a day do you spend in your studio? I, I, uh, I, don't, I regret getting, I regret getting older, you know, because I'm, I don't have the same stamina, but I, I would work all day. I get up in the morning and, and uh, you know, my wife is saying 10 hours. I don't at least, at least yeah. whatever. I, this, I, this, I, it, for me, it's like breathing. It's, it's work, but it's, uh, it's where I, where I, the place that I want to be and the thing that I want to do. So, uh, you know, I, I work all the time you know, all the time. So, and the, the little stuff, you know, all of the, the little work is like, uh, is like uh, contemplative. It's like Gandhi weaving. It's meditative. It slows you down. Do you know, I talk too fast. You know, I think too fast. So the, the work is, is, is very, very meditative and, um, and, and slow. But the, but the sculpture, the, the, the cardboard is very, very physical. So you exercise all parts of yourself, you know, the, the physical part and the, uh, you know, and the slow contemplative part. So here, so here, this, we're gonna do a, you know, this cardboard workshop. These were all, these were all, these were all forms that I was gonna do, bring up to the fuller for the cardboard workshop. And now, uh, you know, that was, uh, but we're going to do that in the fall, right? So, 
Should I do or should I do this demonstration now? Or? Yeah, could you show us how to make one of I'm your cards? Like this? Gonna... Right here, a hot glue gun. If you you know if you're an artist, you have to invest in tools. So this is like an industrial hot glue gun. You know. Down. Jimmy, those, 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 Jimmy, those monkeys, how do you get the tail to curve like that? How do you get them to curve like that? Uh, every, well, I'll show you when I do the demo. When I do the demo. Okay. But for every, but for every, for every monkey leg, you know, for everything you do here, I'll show you. This is like this is for this pro for this project. How many monkeys are there? There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven monkeys. Right here, here's a uh, here's a uh, here's a uh, monkey legs that didn't make it. That didn't make it. <laughs> you know, so you're, the great thing about cardboard. The great thing about cardboard is if it doesn't work, do it again and make it right. So, anyway. Jimmy, we have a question about your influences, by the way. Someone, um, besides what? your influences, besides Francisco Goya. Who, which artists inspire you? I, you know, something I can't, it's, it's a great question, but I can't really, everybody, I love, I love art, you know, I love, uh, I love, uh, I love being an artist, you know, and I love looking at painting, I love, uh, well, Goya is like God to me, you know, he's, uh, you know, phenomenal, but I love, um, when I was at Pratt, I had phenomenal teachers, I had, I had a teacher who nobody heard of, Stephen Green, and another teacher, Richard Lindner. You know, they were they were phenomenal, phenomenal teachers, and and really taught about about essence, about space and process. These are these are oh here, there's a this is friends, friends, and uh, you know, and people who've been great. And actually, the the picture of the old man. You know, was uh, was done by my grandfather. Which one is that? Oh, okay. And here, and that bird is a. There's a. There's a sculptor, uh, a Louis Imanez. Do you know his work? Anyway, he's he's a Southwest sculptor. Does gigantic style, and and the calico cats my mother made in her, in her nursing home. <laughs> and here, and this, this is all pictures of, uh, you know, friends and stuff. Oh. Oh, get, get me. Jimmy, a, a question about your larger works. Um, do you have do you have an assistant that helps you with any part of the, an the larger projects? I've had I've had, I've been unbelievably lucky. I've had some incredible assistants, and uh, actually, with the last with the coronavirus, I had somebody that I was just to work with that uh, that's um, you know that I had to let that we had to stop stop working together. But I've had an assistant. Uh, the most recent was a, a woman named Phoebe Hart. Who uh, who was with me for about three and a half years, and uh, she was phenomenal. And now she's out at Cal Arts making animated films and stuff. And uh, and there's a guy Matt Gonzalez and uh, and a guy named Joe Fusina. Those were my big three, right? So I, you know, I I I can't tell you how much I I love all three of those people. So anyway, <laughs> here's cardboard. Does Leslie, your wife, ever work with you? Uh, you know, when I, when, I, when, we first, when we first got married, I was doing a gigantic project. I was built, I built one, uh, my first show at this, at Allen Song Gallery was a show called Cottage in the Woods. You know, it was a, I built a, uh, I built a, a house with figures in the house, 
inside of like all these paper mache trees and woods and uh, and I had a big giant, the house was sort of like undulating and it had a big giant tongue that came out of the house as a, a walkway. And there were, uh, and there were uh, uh, leaves, millions of fabric leaves, uh, grasses that were coming up all around the, all around the piece. And I asked my wife uh, to come over to the studio and help me stuff. The I leaves. wasn't your wife then. No, she wasn't my wife, my girlfriend, to come over and help me stuff the leaves. And she was totally uninterested in doing that. So I knew right from the very beginning that uh, that uh, you know she she had other interests, you know she had her own life, you know. But uh, but she's unbelievably supportive, and uh, and we're 50 years, you know, we're and I and I, and I well I love her more today. Or today than yesterday, but not as much as tomorrow. Anyway, okay, here's a uh, here's cardboard, right? It's when you when when you're an artist, you're uh, it's, uh, it's like your David Copperfield. Everything is sort of like a magic show. So here, this is an ordinary piece of cardboard, right? No, nothing, all right? So we'll, uh, oh, now I can't find my, uh, my you knife. Were, you were showing your knife. I was showing my knife. Now Does I anyone remember, knife. is this the? Yes, oh God. If I could, uh, if I could take all, all the time, for all the pieces that I, uh, that I, uh, anyway, okay, okay, here we go, here. So I'm gonna make a, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna make a cardboard fish. So a cardboard fish is, you've heard like the Yeti and the abominable snowman and the Loch Ness Monster, they're all unbelievably elusive and rare, like, you know, but, uh, but the rarest thing on the planet Earth, you know, is a cardboard fish. So here we, here we go. How much fun is this? Okay, here, I'm just, uh, perfect, perfect. Okay, here, so now from, from, from nothing, from nothing, here, here comes a, uh, here comes a fish. I feel like Julia Child doing this. Mm -hmm. when, when she cut herself on Saturday night, uh, skit, Saturday, anyway. Mm -hmm. Ask me another question. Well, you know, Jimmy, you're getting a lot of uh, love and praise from uh, in the chat box. There is um, uh, Bob Marty who, who uh, mentions that you are a very influential professor at Pratt and elsewhere. And uh, your students always remember your powerful classes to this day. So I thought I'd share that with you, that your impact can't be overestimated. So. It can be overestimated, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you. <laughs> uh, I'm so insecure. I'm so insecure, you know, that, um, that uh, nothing can cure me now, you know? <laughs> So everything, everything in the cardboard world is basically uh, is basically a sandwich. So you make one side, and you make the other side. I made. See, actually, I did this bad. I did this wrong. But uh, here, this is a. Uh, you can see how cardboard has a has a striation in it. You know. So if you try to uh, if you try to turn it this way. It really won't turn, but if you go with the curve, you can actually you can actually flex the whole thing and make it curve. If this this I this I actually cut I cut the wrong way. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to I'm just going to score it down the center. So we can just flex it a little bit. All right. All right. Okay. Here. So now, here. These are these are spacers. So look here. So you can make them make them make them turn. And I'm going to uh, take my hot glue gun. 
and oh, how great is this? Okay. Ouch, ow, ow. I'm only kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy, have you done this project with your grandchildren? Have, are, are you doing art with them or? You know, something I don't, I haven't, you know, I don't think I've done things with them. Years. I actually, I've gone, I've gone to their classes and the, you know what I mean, and done projects, but they, they're, they're here so much and they see so much. They, they sort of take everything for, for granted, you know, but, uh, but I've done, I've done, um, I've done uh, projects all, you know, all over. And when I'm doing this, you know, I ask, I tell the kids that I've done, if you can name something, I built it out of cardboard. So I said, go ahead and, you know, like name something. And they'll say things like, uh, like, have you ever made a, a horse? And I say, yes, I've made a horse. Have you ever made a car? I say, yes, you know what I mean? I've made a car. And then they start going crazy. They say, have you ever made a art bar? <laughs> you know, okay. No, I haven't made an art bar. So anyway. Okay, here, so that's one side. Here now I'm going, I'm going on the other side. So once once everything is uh, you have greetings from Susan Wheelwright. Am I what? You have greetings from Susan Wheelwright. Susan. Right. Oh, wow. Susan Wheel. Oh, yeah. my goodness. Susan Wheel. Anyway, Joe Wheelwright yeah. is one of the most fabulous uh, sculptors that there ever was. You know what I mean? A mighty, mighty, extraordinary man, you know, who, uh, who uh, you know, anyway, I miss. Hello, Susan. Okay, here we go. Here's now I have one side, two, ta da, right? Now I'm going to put the other, I'm putting the other side. If you, if you can't, if you can't play, if you stop playing, if you want, if you, if you're not, if you want too much from your work, you know, you want success, fame, money. You know what I mean? You you sort of defeat the whole purpose. The whole the whole thing is about the. Uh, it's about what? You know something there. It's about what? I, now I, I don't remember. I absolutely don't remember. I don't know what it's about. That's yeah. what it's about. Finding out what 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 it's all what it is. Anyway, okay. Here, look at this. From nothing. From nothing. Okay. You know we. Uh, Let's see. Oh, here. Let's, uh... Jimmy, someone says that Elon Musk should seek you out. What does that say? Say someone, that again. Someone mentioned Elon Musk should seek you out. Oh. What about Elon, Elon Musk? Musk? I'm the Elon Musk from Cardboard? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I am. I am. And, um, okay, here, here, here. This is, this is, uh, how can you make a mistake? Do you know what I mean? I mean, how do you, how can you make, how can you make a mistake? Everybody worries about, everybody worries about everything. Like, how do you make, how do you make an ocean or anything? Everybody, everybody knows, here, that's, that's, that's an ocean. You know what I mean? I mean, everybody knows, everybody, you know, everybody knows that, uh, you know, you can, here, 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 you know, here, that's a, a, a rhinoceros. Do you know what I mean? You can. You can, uh, you don't have to worry about reference about anything. You know, the Nike, the Nike ad is like the greatest ad ever. Just do it, you know, just do it. Oh, whoa, whoa. whoa. I'm gonna make this uh, a little bit shorter. So if, if you cut you the ask me the, another question, I'm not. If, Jimmy, if you she's asking. Oh, you, you are asking, I'm sorry. If you cut a piece that's not quite right, do you just make a smaller fish out of it? it yes, you, yeah, why not? Absolutely. Like you do? No. Absolutely, the thing is, you know, the, yes, you can make, 
There's no waste. There's no anything. You just focus on him. Okay. Oh my God. Here, look. Uh -huh. Whoa. Already, you know, let's say, uh, okay, here. Now, now what is this fish? Let's say, uh, well, I know. What is a fish? What's, I'm going to get the. Okay, let's say, what is a. Uh, Hold it. Oh yeah, this looks this looks great. All right. Oh, you have greetings and love from Aviva and Barry. Oh, very nice. What is that? Aviva and Barry yes. Castleman. That's great. And and somebody asks, how do you? I, and somebody asks, how do you preserve your work? How do you preserve the cardboard? You know, if, if you, you know, first of all, do you know what I mean? You know, you can preserve it with, uh, you know, with, uh, by coating it with like a, like a you know, primer, primer sealers. You know, you can build up the surface. The, the things that last, last forever, but like the, the fountain, the whole thing with the fountain, the whole the, the Afghan boot has lasted 2,000 years until uh, they got blown up. You know, the World Trade Center, everything is finite. You know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not going to worry, or I wasn't worried about anything. And then all of a sudden, some people want this stuff in bronze. So uh, everybody screwed me up in a way. You know, yeah, I had this whole idea and this whole philosophy. And then all of a sudden, the bronze pieces started coming along. You know, so uh, it's very... Uh, Anyway. Ashes to ashes, mush to mush. Ashes to ashes, mush to mush. Okay, here, what is this? It's like a What foot. do you think that is? It's like a peanut. It's like a, it's like a. Excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me? It's a fish lip. This is fish lips. Oh, sorry. <laughs> here, fish lips. You know, here, a little oh, yeah. fish lip. Okay, here, let me, okay. okay now I'm going to, uh, Okay, here we go. Here we go. Oh my god, this is looks fantastic. Ah. Fish lips. <laughs> okay. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Okay, here we go. Here. Fish lips. Uh -huh. Okay, here now. Cut a little fish eye. Little fish eye. <laughs> Fish eye for gill. You have a you have a, a shout out from Robin Miller who said that you are a phenomenal teacher. <laughs> I love I love Robin and will never forget her. I used to call her Bobin. Bobin Miller. Because <laughs> I because she wrote her R in Robin, and it looked like to me, it looked like a, uh, a V. Uh -huh. But I think Robin, I think what she was in my class, I think when my, when my first, when my, when my daughter was born. Anyway, here's a, a little, uh, little thin, yeah. little thin. Oh, here we go. Oh, let me see here. Let's say here, let's say, Oh my gosh, here we go. This is looking, this is looking fantastic. All right. Here, I'm gonna make this, uh, I'm gonna make this a little more, uh,
Okay, I'm going to uh, okay slip on the top. Okay. Okay, here we're starting to uh, starting to come into shape here. So Jimmy, there's a question. Um, do you ever, what have, is you, that? have you ever given up on a project? Have you ever said like, this is, this is the last monkey, this is the last fish? I think, yes, I, I have said that, but I've been so wrong. There's no <laughs> such thing as the last fish or the last monkey, they just, uh, they, everything has a life of its own, you know, it just, uh, you, you never, you never know the future about anything. Let me, uh, let me just, uh, let me just put one thing. Hold it. Let me get a scissors. It says, I just want to put an eyeball in. Okay, and then we can, all right. You have, a, you have greetings from uh, Mary Reiser. Kind Jess, one of your students in undergraduate painting class in Pratt, at Pratt, uh, 19, 1970. Oh, what a, it was an unbelievable. Teaching in Pratt was one of the one of the one of the great joys of my life. It was so fantastic and uh, an incredible experience. It, it was incredible, you know, just incredible. Anyway, here a fish. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So here, so you know, so are there any? I'll answer any questions or anything. So there are a couple of questions about your larger works. Um, First of all, how how does drawing function in your process? Is it important to draw first? How does drawing function in your process? I think I think I think like, like every drawing is is I think is the root of everything. It's the it's it's the most malleable, the most flexible. You know, you can correct, make mistakes, and you can learn. I mean, from I mean, you know, drawing is, is sort of like the key to understanding, you know, I mean, of space and everything. So, uh, you know, for, for me, one of the great, uh, I want to see if I can find something. I can't. Oh, let me just see if I. Here, I'm sorry. Here, here, just here. Look, if you were, uh, if, if you, if you, if you draw, if you draw, if you draw a figure. You know, with in the drawing, you know, you start, you start to realize that the space, that that the line around the figure becomes a becomes a barrier. Be, you know, becomes a barrier for everything. So the space, everything in a, in a drawing, everything in an artwork has to flow. So you can do the same, you can do the same figure. You can do the same figure and let it, and let it breathe, and let it breathe in the space. You know, so you have to make things breathe because the key is to learning about breath in, in, in a work. So drawing is essential. It's okay. essential. Not 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 for uh, for doing portraits or things, but for understanding the, the basic way that an art piece works. Right. And, and when you're working on a large scale piece okay, when when you're working on a large scale piece, um, do you make patterns to scale or sketches that are projected on an enlarger? 
How does that work? No, I just, you know, the great, the, the great thing about cardboard, you know what I mean, is you just get a piece and you just cut it out. If, if, if the leg doesn't work this size, then you cut it and you make it bigger. You know what I mean? You, you get it, you put it up, you put it up, and then if it doesn't work, you know, you know, get another piece of cardboard. Oh what is that? What about the woodcuts? No. I should show them. Wood no, do you do a drawing for the woodcuts? Sometimes, sometimes, you know what I mean? But the, the, the thing is, you know, I'm, I, I did so much illustration in my life, you know what I mean, that I, I, I'm one of the few, I understand the difference between an illustration and a, and a work of art. Do you know what I mean? If you're an illustrator, you know the finish before you start. Everything that you do, do you know what I mean, is directed towards that finish. Do you know, you know the space that it goes in, the audience it has to meet, you know exactly what it is. But if you're an artist, you, you don't want to do something that's too comprehensive in the beginning. You want it to be an adventure all the way. You want to, you want to, you want to arrive at the conclusion. You know, it should be a surprise and a joy to you. You know what I mean? It's a, it's a joyous adventure. Do you know, it's, it's, it's something else when you know the conclusion before you start, right? You know, so. Wow. Uh. So um, we have another, a couple other questions. Uh, someone wants to know if the pieces that are in your studio, if they're all commissioned, and if one wants to buy a piece, how do they go about it? You know, I, there were a huge amount, I've done almost everything is a, is a commission, you know, and I've just actually finished this gigantic wave of, of commissions and now trying to finish up, uh, you know some other things, but uh, but everything might you know just call just call me. Do you know what I mean? Or, and my wife, my wife who takes care of everything, will take care of you know. Um, can you can you repeat that you did a wonderful explanation about the contour line as a boundary, and we someone wants you to repeat that that explanation, please. Could I repeat the that again? Contour line as a boundary. It's, 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 just, it's just it's repeated. just in 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 a work in a work of art. When 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 when, a, when people start to draw, you know what I mean? They they maybe it's a crossover from coloring books or whatever. Everybody everybody believes in line. You know what I mean? You know, and line is the most powerful. It's it's like a, an incredible powerful tool, but it's not number one. It's not the first thing. The first thing is space, not line. Line is a servant to space. If line becomes a dictator, you know what I mean? If line shuts off and chokes the air in the space, you know what I mean? Then it destroys the drawing. So you have to approach line in a way that allows the drawing and a space to breathe, right? That's, uh, that's the best way that I can put that. Wow, that's wonderful. We have a lot of thank yous here for bringing your wisdom and and um, someone mentioned here, spirituality is very much tied in with your work as well. Um, I don't know if you want to speak to that. Yes, spirituality is very much tied in Spirit with your work. Someone made it, 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 it's, it's, it's everything, you know what I mean? You know, it's all part it's all part of it. You know, it's almost so. It's almost so ridiculous to even say it. But everything is about a search for who you are and what you are, and what and and to find some and to find meaning. You know, you you you're looking for you're looking for meaning all all the time. And I think uh, I think I think I think being an artist is uh, is uh, is the most spiritual thing that you can. Be you you can do you know it's uh it's i think it's whole, in a way it's holy work if it wasn't so uh self-absorbed and uh <laughs> anyway you know anyway yes i think you know jimmy wow yes. thank you thank, thank you. you you know anyway i love the fuller wow I, the fuller. I can't wait to be there i can't wait to do a fish workshop you know i can't wait to see this studio as as jammed as it is, you know what I mean? 
seems seems empty without 80 monkeys hanging from the rafters. So, uh, you know, so I can't wait to visit my friends, uh, my friends, the, the monkeys in, in at the Fuller in Brockton. And uh, and thank you, thank you, and everybody stay safe. And uh, and that's it. Thank you. Unless you, unless there's another question. Thank you. Thank you so much for opening your studio to us. We really appreciate it. We love you. And there, for all those people who are asking how can they purchase something of Jimmy's, we, we uh, contact his wife. <laughs> we shall, we'll, uh, we'll contact Fuller Craft Museum and we'll put you in touch. And, um, but there's a lot of, there are a lot of um, inquiries there. But thank you so much for bringing us into your studio and into your artistry. Um, and Beth, do you have anything you'd like to add before we, we sign off? Beth, I do want to say if somebody wants to contact Jimmy for anything, they can go to his website, jamesgrashow.com, and uh, send him an email. That's great. That's what I was going to say. Thank you, Leslie. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. But thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. All right, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. We will have future track sets and we'll let you know about them. We have a wonderful one, Stephanie Cole, coming up in July. And we're looking forward to that. Also, if you enjoyed this programming, please take a moment to consider making a donation, a quick donation of any size to Fuller Craft Museum. We have copies of the link at, in the chat box. Um, and I'll, I'll post it again so it's at the bottom. But thanks again so much for coming for joining us, and until next time, goodbye. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Thanks, Jimmy. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. It was wonderful. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you very much. Bravo. Love you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jimmy. Lots of love to you. Oh, I know that voice, oh, Laura. <laughs> Jimmy, love you. <laughs> Perry says he loves you too. Vogan loves you. Uh, it's great. Wonderful. Right. Bye bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye.